Welcome to Wagered on Tilt, everyone. I am T, and today I do want to go through linear regression again within Microsoft Excel. Recently, I had somebody reach out to me on X, and they were asking, how can I use some statistics that I have to try and predict the spread of a game? So in doing that, they have it at the player level of stats and not the team level. So if you're doing something like this, where, say, you model out player probabilities and statistics, combine them to a team value and then want to use those team values to try and predict the spread, you can do that. Now, what you're going to want to do is have a good, solid foundational model to build those stats for the player level that can then be translated to the team. Then once you got it at the team level, it's a little easy right now. Um, you're just going to go ahead and put this information into a linear regression and you're off and running. Things that you will need, though, are going to be historical spreads now you can find those on the internet or at different purchasable sites. Uh, there's a lot of free places that you can find them. If you just Google it, I'm sure you'll find it. The other thing is that you want the historical information of the team level values of that data. So if say you think that uh, offensive and defensive rebounding is critical for your model, you want the historical information for each of those games that you have a spread for. That way you can use it for the linear regression. So again, we're going to use these stats to try and build out a linear regression model and then go ahead and do a prediction. So enough of that prep. Let's go ahead and dive on in. All right. So somebody did reach out to me on Twitter or X asking me how to do this. So in this scenario, again, we're going to be using team statistics that are derived from individual players. So the first thing you're going to want to go ahead and set up a roster and a list of players that are going to play. And then you're going to start pulling in their statistics uh, per attribute, right? So I don't know what these 15 points of data are that this person is asking about. Um, so we're just going to pretend as if it's some of this data that we have here. So in here, right, I have a bunch of team data. So this is considered uh, defensive data that I've been collecting um, based upon different teams and what opponent they're playing and information like that. So in here, this is kind of like drilled down information. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create a new sheet real quick. And we're going to come back to the data. So we're just going to pretend that even though this is the defense for this information, we're going to pretend as if it's their own info just for uh, a quick sanity sake. What we're going to go ahead and do is just go ahead and take the team and the name, move it over here to this page. And we're just going to go ahead and extend that out so that we can see it better. All right, so let's go ahead and come over here and we're just going to look at some other stats over here. So let's just say I believe that the rebounding is really critical for whatever reason. Um, so we're going to do this and then I'm going to say the assists is really important to me. And I think their capabilities of blocking are going to be critical. Um, let's see here. And I think that the ultimate thing is their three point attempt and their three point percentage is going to be the most critical information. Now, again, I don't know what these data points are that this person is using. Um, so again, you would take all of those data points per player, uh, per game, you would simulate out to get those numbers, uh, however you want, or you can use the raw numbers depending upon how you're modeling. And then we're going to drop them in here. So I'm just going to say that this is all for the Atlanta Hawks and this is their information. So we're going to pretend that this is historical information. Now the person was wondering how to use those stats to actually predict the spread. Well, what you'd want to also do is have the spread information available from historical information, or you would be able to go ahead and try and calculate out your own spread on what you thought it would be. My suggestion is take historical data, go get the historical spreads, and then run the linear regression to see what you think it's going to output. So we're going to go ahead and come in here and we're just going to make up a bunch of spreads. So I'm going to say that um, this is going to be minus four and a half. This is going to be minus three and a half. This was four. This was minus 6.5. We're going to say that this was uh, six and a half, right? And then we're just going to go ahead and copy and paste this down. Now, again, for the person that reached out to me asking about this, this is using historical info. So you're going to want to get the historical numbers for the spreads that were provided per game. You're going to want to get the team's stats per game that you think those stats were important to predict that spread. 
And then what you're going to want to go ahead and do is take this information and run a linear regression against this. So we're going to go ahead and add spread up here. Now what you're going to want to do again is another reminder. These are historical spreads that you're going to want to collect. This is historical team information that you're going to want to collect. And this is actually driven on the information that you've compiled. So if you have player stats, you would take the player game level stats, compile them to become a team level stat, and then you're going to go ahead and put them in like this. So you're going to go into data at the top. You're going to come over to data analysis, look for regression, hit OK. In here, you're going to go ahead and set your Y being what the output is, right? What you're comparing to, what is the dependent variable. Then you're going to select your independent variables. Again, some of these stats that I'm showing right now may have impacts on one another, so they're not truly independent. Um, if they're not truly independent, you're going to want to break them down further because that'll give you a little bit more clarity. You're going to want to select labels, leave it at the 95% confidence level, tell it to spit it out on a new worksheet. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Now over here, if we look at the R squared, it's only giving us a 0.29 which is not great at all. Uh, we want that number to be much closer to one. And then again, over here, we have our intercepts uh, and then we have the P values. As you can see, all these are above 0 0.05. So that is problematic. Um, so let's go ahead and do one more test. Let's see if we can try and change these. So I'm going to say these are all gonna be like 2.5 minus 2. Uh, 2.5. I'm just going to copy and paste this down. Done, 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 done. So again, the, these numbers are going to look kind of weird uh, just because of how the spread is. Um, I didn't take time to set this up and really think through like historical spreads. So your numbers will probably come out better. Hey, look at that. Magically improved it. Um, all right. So we've got a 0.63 for the R squared, which is decent. Uh, we have our intercepts over here again. So again, these are going to be the coefficients for our formulas. And then we're going to look at the p-value. Now, these are all pretty high. Um, usually, you'll kick these out and not accept these as being actionable. You always want them, well, most of the time, you want them as close as possible to 0 0.05 or below. But we're just going to pretend that these are still valid ones for the sake of a demonstration. So now that I have this, I'm going to come over here. And we're going to go back into our sheet and I'm going to paste this here. So now I have my coefficients for my stats that are team stats that I derived based off of player stats, compared those to the historical spread. So then what I can do is do a model to project out the player level statistics, then compile those to build out my team level statistics and then compare that against this. So I'm just gonna say, we're just gonna grab uh, a random number here. So I'm gonna say indirect B and rand between, and forgot to hit tab, rand between, and what is this? Two and 16, all right. So we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste this across. And then you just need to switch out the letters. So this is going to go to C, D. And what I'm doing is just creating a random uh, value from this table above. Um, a lot of times teams will play relatively consistently in the NBA. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab this information versus trying to actually compile the data. So we're going to have all of that. So we have these values here. Right. And again, this is the percentage. So let's just clean this up real quick. Home percentage. So we're going to say, hey, I looked at the player stats and these are the numbers that I came up with for these individual statistics um, that my model predicted the players would do. And I compiled them and these are the team stats. So now you want to see what the predicted spread is going to be. So I'm just going to highlight this here. So we'll say equals and we're going to say the intercept plus and then we're going to go ahead and put parentheses this value times the coefficients. Close parenthesis, same thing, and we're just going to do this over and over. All right, so we're going to go in here. 
this one, go over one more, this times this, this one is going to be this times this, this one is this times this, this one is equal to this times this, and then we got one more to do, this one times this one. All right, and there's what our predicted spread would be. So again, we said the p-value for these numbers was not good, so we would actually reject what the linear regression came out with because something's wrong with the values that we've selected and the output that it's giving us in comparing it to the spread. So we would reject it, that they're not significant enough, therefore we would never actually use them. But again, right now we're pretending, hey, the p-value was great and it worked out, so these would be predictive. So if I took all this information, right, I had the compiled team values, the historical spread, ran it through linear regression, got my coefficients, used something to predict out individual player stats, I took those player statistics, compiled it into team statistics, and then plugged it into the linear regression formula, this is saying that the spread should actually be 4. So as you can see, linear regression is very simple with things like Microsoft Excel. You just have to go ahead and put in what is the independent and the dependent variables uh, based upon a historical set of data, and then go ahead and run it. Now again, you want the historical spreads. You're going to want the historical information for the team of each of those games of those spreads that you have. And then the biggest piece right now that I can see that might be a problem, don't know if they have this solved, but the person that reached out to me, you have to have a good model for predicting those player stats that you think are going to be critical. If you do not have a solid model for that, then this could be dangerous just because you're not building up the proper team level stats to do this kind of a prediction. So again, I would just run a couple of tests, make sure that your predictive model for your player level statistics is working. But again, once you have that, it's pretty easy to run. You put in your projections into the actual formula using the intercept and the coefficients that are kicked back from the linear regression that you run within Microsoft Excel. So if you found this video useful and helpful or liked it at all in any way, please give it a thumbs up. That way it pushes it to the top of the YouTube algorithm. If you like the content I provide, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you are notified as soon as the next video is available. If you have any questions or comments or need some help on this, feel free to reach me on X at Wagered on Tilt. You can also reach me in the unabated Discord as the T. So that is it from me today. Until next time, happy wagering.